Hello, beautiful people. How are y'all feeling today? I hope you guys are feeling spectacular. Welcome to my channel. My name is Grace and I am a divine feminine coach, intuitive tarot reader, and energy healer. Today, we are going to be talking about the new moon in Capricorn happening January 12th to the 13th. So buckle your seatbelts, guys. It's gonna be a little bit of a frictiony one, but we've got this. We're gonna handle it together. So for this new moon in Capricorn, we have a lot of squares going on with the astrological aspects that are happening. And for those of us who are beginners to astrology, squares indicate areas of friction, right? So we are talking about challenging aspects during this time. The conversations that are happening between the planets that are squaring are very much being amplified and can sometimes manifest as conflict and tension. However, when we keep in perspective that all these challenging aspects that are happening astrologically are for our best interest and for our highest growth, it becomes a lot easier to deal with. And Spirit has already got some messages for us, so let's check out what the first two cards that popped up today were. <laughs> so perfect. All right, so we have the Wheel of Fortune, and the Ace of Wands. This being the first new moon of 2021, this is the perfect time to set intentions, not just for this upcoming month, but for the entire year. So really focusing on what you want to bring into the world for yourself, the person that you want to be this year, and for the vision that you're creating for this year, as well as what is going on globally for humanity and the vision that you want to create for our future. King of Pentacles. So let's talk through a little bit about what is going on for this new moon. So we have the Sun, Moon, and Pluto conjunct in Capricorn. So this means that we are going to really be having a look at how we are challenging power structures in the world and within ourselves. Capricorn is the sign of mastery, right? So how are we mastering our own emotional landscapes during this time? How can we master the ways in which we move through the world and what is going on in our own emotional landscape? This new moon is also particularly powerful because it is the first new moon as we are entering the age of Aquarius. Right now, we have Jupiter, Saturn, and Mercury all in Aquarius nine of wands so here we're going to be looking at three things right the first being associated with jupiter being in aquarius jupiter being the planet of expansion we are going to be talking about our new vision for the future how do we want to expand as a community the second aspect we are talking about is Saturn Aquarius. So Saturn is talking about structure, right? Saturn being the planet of restriction. So here we're really gonna be looking at how can we create a future that is sustainable for the long term and how can we structure this so that it is realistic and will be long lasting. The third aspect that we're talking about is Mercury, which is the planet of expression. So here we're gonna be talking about how we can communicate our views and visions for the future for our community with the people that are in our social circles and with the people that are in our communities. Now with Jupiter, Saturn, and Mercury in Aquarius, these three planets are also squaring Mars, Black Moon, Lilith, and Uranus in Taurus. Now, if we know anything about these three planets, it is that they are some of the most unruly ones that we have. Mars being the planet of action, Black Moon Lilith being the planet of the wild feminine, and Uranus being the planet of revolution. So the conversation that is happening here is that we don't want to obey the structures that are currently in place. And what we're talking about here is societal and man-made structures, right? So there's a lot of conversation right now happening within the astrological aspects that are talking about freedom and truth for humanity. So how can we kind of call into question the laws and rules that be that were put into place by these restrictive and limited oligarchies that are currently starting to crumble. So with these squares that are happening and the emotional tension that may arise due to these squares, it is so important for us to 
take a breather when we need to in order to ground and center ourselves, right? Page of Cups. By allowing ourselves to become more grounded and to become more present with our emotional experience, this allows us to really get clear with ourselves of where we want to focus our energies for this year and also what intentions we are setting for who we want to be and how we want to show up in the world. Now, last year, 2020, around this time, we had Jupiter and Saturn in Capricorn at a very similar degree to where the new moon in Capricorn is going to be this year. So it's kind of a reflection of everything that's gone on from January 2020 into now January 2021, right? So taking some time to really reflect on how you have awakened, how you have blossomed, all the ways in which we have grown individually and as a collective. All right, you guys, let's dive right into this reading. So we are starting off with the wild energy of the Wheel of Fortune. Now here, we are really focusing on the fact that everything's up in the air right now and we're not quite sure what is going to be brought into our reality, right? This is a very unpredictable energy and it is so perfect for the theme of this year. The astrological aspects support this as well. 2021 has a very unpredictable nature. A lot of things have already happened so far this year and it will continue. The Wheel of Fortune is challenging us to surrender to this process and recognize that a lot of the external events that are happening are things that we don't have control over. However, what we do have control over is how we choose to show up and how we choose to participate in the external world. So whatever intentions we are setting, let's do our best to not have an attachment to the outcome. A lot of the times we get so fixated on this attachment to outcome, right? I need this to be this way or else everything's going to fall apart. However, when we can choose to have a healthy detachment from the outcome and recognize that whatever our life brings to us is ultimately for our highest expansion, then we can let go of this need to control and surrender to the flow of the universe that is unraveling before us. And we can do a lot to ensure that our vibration and our frequency is as high as it can possibly be so that we can create all the new beginnings that we are working with. The Ace of Wands is symbolic of new beginnings. All aces are very symbolic of fresh starts, right? And new opportunities that are being presented to us. And if you guys have been watching my daily tarot videos, you already know that the Ace of Wands in particular, wands being tied to the element of fire, has to do with new beginnings in the creative world. So the element of fire is very much tied to divine inspiration, creativity, expression of the self, the way in which we show up in the world and the little everyday actions that we decide to take. This moon is also very much talking about this rebirth, right? With Pluto being conjunct with the sun and moon in Capricorn, we are very much discussing what we are looking to rebirth into the world, right? How can we create this new way of pursuing what it is that we want to create. Maybe the things that we were doing previously are no longer working for us. So now we have to kind of shift our way of doing things, the method in which we show up. Capricorn, like we talked about a little bit before, is all about mastery, right? So how can you master your emotional landscape? How can you master and hone your craft in order to create this new beginning and this new way of approaching things? The next card we have today is the King of Pentacles. You guys, this is all about abundance in the material world. What are we doing that to create financial freedom, to create the career and purpose that really fulfills us? How are we crafting our home life? The King of Pentacles gives off a very Taurian energy, Pentacles being tied to the suit of Earth, which represents the concerns of the material world. He is challenging us to rise into our own king power, right? So this is all about having this abundance mindset rather than living in the 
previous mindsets of scarcity, right? Humanity has been in survival mode for such a long time, and it is time for us to rise into thrive mode. Are you guys with me? I sure hope so. We are being asked how we can create abundance and freedom in our lives. How can we diligently work and plant the seeds so that we can reap the rewards of the fruits? After we have put in the labor, we put in the work in order to create the future that we desire. How can we allow ourselves to embrace this freedom? And part of embracing this freedom comes from letting go of the weight of the past, right? The nine of wands, this guy is kind of like PTSD guy, right? Like he is so bogged down. He's been to war, he's been to battle, he's seen it all, and he is exhausted from holding on to the weight of the past. So yes, we know that 2020 was a challenging year for all of us. How can we allow that to fade away and recognize that all of these things were happening for a reason? How can we challenge ourselves to let go of these false narratives that we have created and perpetuated for ourselves, particularly in the power structures that we have chosen to outsource our own power, our autonomy, our sovereignty to, and how can we reclaim that for ourselves? How can we really begin to own our own power? And part of owning our own power comes from really familiarizing with ourselves in exploring our emotional worlds. So the Page of Cups is really talking about beginnings in our emotional creative landscape. So this page is inviting us to really get a fresh, to really get, get a fresh perspective, y'all. How can we create a fresh perspective on how we interact with our own emotions? A lot of the downfall of why we currently have the problems that we do have is a lack of awareness for our own emotional worlds and we have neglected our healing as a collective for such a long time. This also comes from seeing other people as other, right? And kind of creating this separation between us and them. However, when we begin to tap into our empathy and into our emotional selves, we recognize that everything and everyone is interconnected. We are all feeling creatures. And of course, we can only meet others on the levels that we've met ourselves. So if we're not emotionally aware of how we're feeling, there's no way on earth that we're gonna be any more compassionate towards other people's emotions. So again, this starts with ourselves and our relationship to self. How do we handle our own emotional worlds? When we can really empathize with our own emotions and hold them as valid and recognize that these are important tools and allies that are giving us messages about our current experience, then we can begin to integrate all the lessons that are happening because of these things. And when we do that, we have greater empathy and compassion and kindness towards the emotions of others and the traumas that maybe they are still working on. Now I'm going to close out this reading with one final card from my Moonology Oracle deck. And I just want to remind you guys to be super gentle with yourselves. If you are feeling the emotional tension, the friction that is in the air right now, it's okay, you are not alone. So cardinal signs in particular are being hit hard with this energy. So this is Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and Cancer. Be super loving to yourself. Take some time for you. If you need to take a step back and take a breather from whatever social engagements that are calling you right now, for whatever obligations that are feeling more like a chore than like a blessing, then do that. The external world will still be there. Take a break from social media, take a break from interactions with other people and really tune inward. And today we have the full moon and Pisces card, balance, spirituality, and practicality. I love this given some of the conversation that I've been having recently. So sometimes it is important for us to recognize that yes, we are always spiritual beings living on a spiritual path and 
sometimes we need to focus on the real life stuff, right? So what I mean by real life stuff is how are you nourishing yourself? Are you feeding yourself healthy, nutritious foods that are going to give you energy or bring you down? Are you taking care of your body? Are you allowing yourself to be out in nature? Are you finding movement that brings you joy and makes you feel good? Are you focusing on the immediate concerns in front of you? And sometimes a lot of us can use spirituality as a form of escapism. So really asking ourselves, am I practicing spirituality for the purpose of my own self-healing and growth? Or am I practicing it as a form of Novocaine? Am I using it to numb out in some way and bypass my problems? Because the spiritual journey is beautiful, it's messy, it's such an integral part of our human experience and vice versa, right? The human experience is a huge important part of spirituality and of our spiritual practice. How can we balance the two? How can we get real with ourselves of where each aspect of our journey is serving us and where it is not serving us? Sometimes we just need to do the human thing. It is okay to really sit with our emotions and to allow yourself to be a hot mess. That's all right. That is part of the journey, right? And there's other times where, you know, you are going to be really rooted in your spiritual practice. It's okay if you fall off for a little bit, right? Just make sure that you are getting back on and allow yourself to balance out the real world concerns, you know, your finances, your job, whatever those things may be. And if they happen to align with spirituality, great. If not, make sure that there is a balance between that and your spiritual life. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this reading served you well. If it did, don't hesitate to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I am still offering a new year special for tarot readings. If you're interested, hit me up on Instagram at lotuscoaching13 to book your reading. I'm also currently opening for new clients for pay what you can coaching. If you wanna dive a little deeper and work through some of those limiting beliefs and really create a routine and structure for how to heal your emotional world, Hit me up on Instagram at lotuscoaching13. Have a beautiful rest of your day.